Nothing wrong with you dressing to be found. It's just that you have to know where to bring it and where to stop it. Are you with me? You have men out there go gym, exercise, then they want to show muscle, they, they wear the little stuff, and they, they want to show their five pack because they want to be, or their six pack, they want to be found. When you've been found, now you cover up, you're, you're fine already. Somebody found you. When you've been found, don't go back at your hunting location. You are a wife now. What are you doing in dance? That's a hunting ground. What are you doing in night's club, in party? That's hunting ground. Hunting ground when you've been found, now go back there. Any and any people are going to call to you and tell you, sis, you're not supposed to be sick. You are a wife. Them have caution when they approach you. But you're just like you're still hunting. So there's no respect for you. Any and anybody sitting after you. Are you with me? And when any and anybody sitting after you, then it destroys the honor upon your life. Party is for hunter who hunting a mate. Clubs are for hunters. Dance are for hunters. You're not going there no more. You're being found. That's why your life is so confiscated because you're still going in the hunting environment. Then all of a sudden you have 25 person on your WhatsApp, WhatsApping you. You and your husband now having problem because hunter is on your tail. You walk with a Anna on your finger, a marriage ring. When a gentleman or a woman approach you, they have to approach you with caution. Good morning, how are you? But no, you don't dress like a wife or a husband. You dress like a hunter. So they approach you. Your girl. Your dog. You're a hunter. You're up for sale. Change your approach in life. Because if you approach raw, then fly is coming for you. If you approach sweet, then bees are ants coming for you. If you approach meaty, then dogs are coming for you. If you approach butter, then pussy is coming for you. Be careful how you approach life. Very important. My topic this morning was to preach about the sacrificial blood, but all of a sudden I'm talking. I have a, a member of mine that employ into a security company that bring him to a place they call the Half a Moon Hotel. He said when he's there, every room of the hotel is full packed. To the capacity. You know why it named Half a Moon Hotel? You don't know. One weekend is for half a million dollar. And the hotel is packed to the capacity. If you don't have half a million dollar, don't go. Then suppose it was the full moon hotel. Full million. Everything royal. Everything classic. And you let a little idiot take you on a guest house. With three thousand dollar. Have you like a chink? When some little people who are not royal go into half a moon hotel, spending weekend with family, enjoying life, where you're putting yourself? 
I'm talking to royal people. I'm, I'm putting some honor on your life. Come out of that. Come out of this look of catchy, catchy life. Where any, anybody, every me, some look of old, certain park up your gate, I pick you up, cut it out. Be found by a true child of God. Honorable. Sanctify. Wash in the power of God. And build a foundation and a relationship with your family and God. And come out as go scatter, scatter. Joy, some joy, this or some joy, or this or some joy, or this. Call you, did you hear me? I call you. Who you talking to? I changed my number in seconds. Never call back this number. You speak with great honor. You didn't buy this phone, I bought it. And they call you midnight. You don't call me after 10. Midnight, making a wake up, you're asleep. It's night, night is for rest. Man, there your gate. You at my gate? I'm gonna let the dogs. I'm gonna let go the animals. What are you doing at my gate at 10 o'clock? Yeah, yeah, some man can look for you. Look for, look for me? Look for my dogs. Investigate. And not just investigate now. Investigate five years ahead of you. I want to talk to a young man. You love to get married, right? I want to counsel you. Just listen. If you meet a woman that don't eat too much, but picky picky and eat little, then in five years she'll still be the same weight. So you can look in five years and say, oh, I will still be with that woman five years at the same size. But if you look, if you find a wife that eat like a cow, you know the next five years, she's a cow. If you can't manage a cow the next five years, don't take her up now. You need to look five years ahead of you. Ten years ahead of you. What type of ambition she have? Is she looking a job or is she looking like she want to go for in life? Where you want? I, mean, I don't know what I want. You don't know what you want? Then we can talk. You need to know what you want. Very important. You don't know where you're going. You just want to live. You want to be a, 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 a housewife all the day of your life and me alone work. You can't work like that. You're not going to get my money. Are you with me? Are we over the time? Amen. 12.30, we're over by 1 o'clock. We can't prophesy at the time too short, so we prophesy choose when the time is more longer. So it's very important in life that the both of you know where you're going, you know your aim, and you know what you're going to become in life. Are you with me? So you commune together, put God at the center, and make it work. But all you're looking at is what is happening now what about next five years what about the next ten years are you with me some of you you're 45 some is almost 50 you can take up somebody who don't go in no way and you're 46 years old the next 10 years you must stop work then who gonna take care of you my god how much time you have to do things that you know don't work but you just have to do it because of the laws and stipulations you have to do it do one thing for me always remember do what works
always remember do what work a gentleman and his wife are he fancy to be married the family having problem because the gentleman is now making some money so the family is saying that he is taking the gentleman from them so they make an allegory that she tie him be careful of family when they see that the person in the family is going higher in society and the wife or the husband going to draw them away then they find allegation a time time why him not coming to his mama or his sister so I said to the gentleman what is wrong with you he said his mother and sister say she time and he want to know if it is true because they're going through hell in the relationship so I tell him a pretty girl like she I would love for a pretty woman to tie me I say you love her he said yes I say it no matter if she tie you if you want to spend the rest of your life with a woman if she tie you it no matter because you say you want to spend your life with her isn't it? You want to spend your life with a man and the man tell you, then who cares? You didn't say you forgot to tell anybody no. But this is not a coping. I'm just preaching. Anytime you go in higher in society, and your family love you and see that your wife gonna draw you away they're gonna draw a legation is time she time once i love you and i want to spend the rest of my life with you if you could have tied me with cow rope donkey rope goat rope i don't care once my life is happy and I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. I am fine. But don't put no in my stupid. <laughs> don't let my belly run. First, I, I don't mean you, but some woman. When they tie you. Even Aksa blade can cut that. I didn't say if you got tie anybody now. I'm just preaching wisdom. Life were given unto us over a billion years ago. Life wasn't given unto us by blood. Life were given unto us by the presence of God if life should taken from us it must be by the presence of God if life must be redeemed it must be by the presence of God but now man is redeeming life by blood they call it the sacrificial lamb of a living God called Jesus Christ now if Jesus blood is a sacrificial blood that to save you from your sin that mean all of you are wrongdoers that mean if God have to save you from sin something is wrong with your doing am I right and the Bible state that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life no, if the wages of sin is death, that means if you sin, you should die. How Jesus saving you from dying? Jesus could not go against the will of God to save you from the will of God. Said the wages of sin must die. So something wrong with blood. So wherever the blood of Jesus spilled, there must be sacrifice because he is the sacrificial lamb. 
the church is silent because when you touch their Jesus, they are alert to attack you. I'm going to touch our Jesus. It's not your Jesus alone. It's our Jesus. And that's why many allegories are going around that the little virus that's going on is God trying to test the church. I've never seen so much hypocrite in my life. How God could test the church with virus that come out of lab. Don't be an idiot inside of a church of God. His man-made test is God doing nothing to his people. The undercover agents place a, a silent night and the, the center plate of the country stay in their country, press one button and the whole country shake. And they start to measure with tape measure. It's, it's 3.5 whatever point of earthquake and immediately bishops start to preach God sent earthquake to test his people. You Where you come from with your cocoa head and Nancy story? You don't know earthquake from mankind, man-made system. They have a climate change right now in Alaska, in different countries, where that they can do whatever they do and the whole Jamaica turn dark. And rain start to fall until they stop it. Rain continue to fall. And you think I've got to send it? You, if you ever know how powerful you is. What you don't know? You make them know how powerful they are. And what they can do. But you don't know how powerful you are. Because the only thing you read the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. The Lord lead you to the valley of the shadow of death. And you go into graveyards and all those dopey. And you tell me that the Bible says you never fear no evil. Those dirty, ugly, dopey look at you. Fear no evil. For thy rod and thy stuff. God only lead his people to righteous places, to holy places, to powerful places, to awesome places. The church is silent because I touch the Jesus. So wherever the blood of Jesus spilled, they have to be sacrificed because he is the sacrificial lamb. So if you don't ready to live by sacrifice, don't worship the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus is a sacrificial blood. You don't believe me? Read the Bible. Read Corinthians 15. Open the Bible to 1 Corinthians 15. It was found by Dempsey. By who? Dempsey. Who named Dempsey? No one named so. He's an allegory. Dempsey. Let us read 1 Corinthians 50. Moreover, brethren, who is speaking? Paul. Yes. I declare unto you. The gospel that I preach unto you, which also, have which also I have received, stop right there. We want to know where he received it from. Who tell him? If it's God or man, tell him. Read. And where he, he stand? By which also we are saved. By which also we are saved. If, we memory, if we keep in memories. Of what I preach unto you, unless ye believe in vain. 
For I delivered unto you first of all that we shall also receive. We want to know where he received it. How that Christ died for our sin. According to scriptures. That means it was a book he was reading. And he manipulated that book and write this one. Are you with me? Continue. And that he was buried. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to a book that he read. So it wasn't Paul know it. And I should tell you that Paul didn't exist. He was just a story, a man that they use as a name in the Bible. He didn't exist. Read. And that he was seen of Cephas. Then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of about 500 brethren at once, of whom the mystery part remained. We don't write it in this book and to this present. But people are foolish in this world. After that, he was seen of James. Then of all the apostles. And last of all. He was seen of me. Guess how Paul seen. Continue. Paul seen as a man born out of due time. That means he born out of the time that the Bible said born. Continue. I am the least of the apostles. I am the least of the allegories. And I'm not meet to be called an apostle. Because in my allegories I persecute churches. Yes. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace continue was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than they all. Let not I continue. Therefore, whether if me preach or other pastor preach, so we preach and you believe what we say. Continue. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you that mean in those days people are saying that it wasn't him raised from the dead, it was an allegory? That there is no resurrection of the dead. Yes. But if there be no resurrection of so the dead, so there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. It's a lie, it's as allegory. Continue. And if Christ, be not and if Christ is not risen, then our, then our preaching that we read from the Bible is in vain. And faith is also in vain. So now we are found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that He raised Jesus from the dead. Who He raised it not up. Stop right there. We don't need no more than that. So we have found false witnesses. Because we proclaim, we preach that he raised Jesus from the dead. And the truth of all, it was an allegory. He raised it not. Every time you touch Jesus, the church goes silent. Because all they know is their sweet Jesus. They place it on the children's book. They place it on your old people lampshade. You have to call it sweet home, sweet home. They place it on your veranda. They place it on the almanac. They place it all over your house. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. I wonder you are. You're brighter than the morning star. 100% of God people have been manipulated and turned into vampires.
If I kill a goat and you eat the meat, you guilty as me who killed the goat. Am I right? So if the devil killed Jesus and you celebrate that the blood saved you, you guilty of murder too. Is it? So all of you are murderers. And not just murderers, you are vampires. Because every first Sunday you eat of his body and drink of his blood, you are a vampire. Vampire, vampire, I wonder you are. You are eating Jesus' body and drinking his blood. Every time I touch the people, them Jesus, the church locked down. Every time I touch you, Jesus, you stop short. Every time I touch the Jesus, because the true Jesus can dead. It's only the manipulation one can die. But the real Jesus cannot be in touch. So they, they write the Bible and then make laws for it to be fulfilled. And when they make laws for it to be fulfilled, people go back to the Bible and say, see it, I say Bible say, and in doing and the sense that they might cause it to happen, say Bible fulfilled. Where you come from? Where you come from? Some of you link up with a lot of prophets from Africa. Some of them will kill you. They come all over Jamaica. Making all different type of allegory story, a strike lightning on altar, fire ablaze, intercessor turn over. I want somebody to rule for me. Man come from Africa, ask the whole congregation, over a thousand people, people who have diploma degree, PhD, intelligent people in the church, and you don't know it's a idiot. The Lord said you should bring a hundred thousand, fifty thousand, and your life will change in the same hour. People borrow money. People go get their partner jaw, put it in envelope, put it on altar, write requests of what they want. And a full, full big neck bishop. Sit down. After his confederate take up all the money. He pulled the buckle of olive oil with his quickened spirit in it. Sprinkle it on all the requests. And they know it's a quickening or is it, they call it a, a chemical reaction. That means as soon as the chemical touches the toil, it gash fire. And you a idiot, no know that? They say you idiot now. More than a thousand people in the congregation with the intelligent overseer bishop sit down belching. Even his money gone in the pack. And after he sprinkled the olive oil with the quicken, whatever thing, and the request, he said, In the name of Jesus, fire! And the Request get catch a fire immediately because the chemical reaction touched the tile. I hear that intercessor start to roll like donkey. I want somebody to roll for me. <laughs> intercessor who connect with God a roll. People catching the spirit. Somebody speaking tongues. Where cowboys? They speaking tongues. See, the whole church is on fire. And don't know the little idiot from Africa make an allegory. Promise the pastor that within 24 hours this church will chipper of people. And because of that, him not one an offering. Because him church I got chipper. 
It's amazing the devil know how to manipulate you. Make you feel good when he's robbing you. I'm going to buy your house. I'm going to buy your car. I'm going to buy you this. And after you finish, the man going to leave you. All the Gary's. After the prophet gone back to Africa, three week pass, people still in, in problem with loan and bills and pardon this and pardon that. And they wonder what happened. So one day I go to Kingston and I meet the bishop. I said, I hear that I hear that the church was on fire, man. He said, Yes, a prophet caused fire from, from heaven. I said, Fire from heaven. I said, Let me tell you something. I'm gonna learn a little wisdom, but you have to pay me just like how you pay the prophet. You're gonna pay pay this one. I said, park your vehicle. I bring him go to a pharmacy downtown. For you know me know Kingston good. He, he can't take too much time because he's busy. I say you came busy to get wisdom. Because right now you are overseer. You, you are the, the, the overseer of, of the church, but you are a cocoa head. You learn from a real prophet. I bring him go to the, the, the March pharmacy downtown where them sell all the gimmicks. And I buy the quicken oil. No matter fact, I'm saying you buy it. Me not touch nothing in nice place. And he buy it and we go up to the church. I said, throw it in the olive oil and mix it up. I said, don't even put no paper on the tile. Just throw it on the tile. In seconds, the tile catch a fire. So that's what the prophet do. It's chemical reaction. Once he throw it on the paper, it takes a little time to reach the tiles. So it gives him a couple of seconds before he starts to plea from him so-called heaven. And you let the man go on with over maybe one point at million dollars with a little bottle of oil. He said, the man almost, he almost fall on the altar. He said, prophet, I can't believe this happened. I said, it happened to you. Because you are idiots. Your whole congregation are idiots. Not even one person says something right. You let pastor lay hands on your head. I rebuke demon and you not have no demon. You be careful. Not because we dress up in jacket suit and speak God. That don't mean we have God. And I'm putting myself in it too. Examine your bishop. Examine your prophet. No one again if you take a little time to peep and watch him. Away my go. Seen drive go up the road, you know. Watch him. But you know, watch nobody because in, in a jacket suit him him holy. No go so. The devil form himself in jacket suit. You find my scripture, man? You find it? Are you there? Second Peter. Yes. Second Peter three. Yes. This is Peter talking to Paul now when he replying to Paul about his father who died. Repeat. Continue. The second epistle beloved. Yes. In both, I want to stir up your mind. By way of the river. Yes. That he may be mindful of the words. Yes. Which was spoken before by the holy prophets. My God. And the commandment of us, the apostles. So all the commandments was of the apostles, not of God. Continue. Of the Lord and Savior. Yes. No, in it is first. No, they shall come in the last days. Walking after their own lust. They're walking after their own lust. And saying, Where is the promise of your father coming, Paul? 
For since you Jesus dead, all things remain the same and him now wake back up. As they were from the beginning of the creation. My God. For this the people are ignorant. For this the people are ignorant. Because the real Jesus cannot die. So where is the promise of your so-called Jesus with it? Oh, you come back up and the earth remain the same. Can I speak about the real Jesus to you? The real Jesus remain of a quickened spirit. He is from the order of Melchizedek. He have no mother, he have no father, he have no or origin. He only appear upon the earth. He can disappear, he can appear and he can transform in millions of different features. He have no color. The Jesus that I'm talking about is with you right now. He is not the Alpha and he is not the Omega. That means he don't have no beginning and he don't have no ending. He is omnipresence. That's only the Jesus, the prophet of God. No. He cannot be touched by man because he's sovereign. He's of a quickened spirit. He didn't burn. So he can't die. So he's not the Alpha and he's not the Omega. He's omnipresent. If you put God at the Alpha and God at the Omega, that means you don't know your father. Because God don't have a beginning and he don't have no ending. He's omnipresent, serving absolute mighty God that we serve. Are you with me? So before you get yourself in trouble, God solved the problem because your God is before. You are serving a God that presence. That's why you are in trouble. That's why you are sick. That's why you are in danger. Because your God is, is Alpha and is Omega. You must serve a God that is omnipresent. That means before it happened, the problem solved. You see what I'm saying? So there is not just two sides of God. There is also a mystery side that you don't know. A spiritual side of God. A natural side of God. And this mystery side of God. The mystery side of God is the one that you have never heard before. The one that a preacher never preached before. Because he don't been there. It's only an apostle or a prophet can take you there. Are you with me? But no, these days, every preacher a prophet, every preacher a pastor, every preacher turn doctor, doctor, honorable prophet, a pastor, eternal father, Alexander, Bustamante, Peter, Touch, Mandela. When they done with the church over and they don't preach it. Are you with me? As I close today. My topic was the blood, but I forgive me. Forgive me. Man forgive, but God don't forgive. In the mystery side of God. Because all of you believe that God forgive, but in the mystery side, God don't forgive. And why I tell this before I close, this is where God put the fish. Am I right? God put the fish in water, to live in water, to survive in water. The fish come out of the water by himself because he's a Range Rover and pretty cars on the road and he's a pretty suit. He wants to dress up in. What's going to happen to him? If he pray, what's going to happen to him? If he intercede, what's going to happen to him? If he go to a bishop, what's going to happen to him? If he go to a prophet, what's going to happen to him? Because he belong, God will never forgive him from come out of where he put him. God put me in Jamaica. You want to leave Jamaica, go to New York. If God did want you to live in New York, you would burn over there. But you want to leave Jamaica and go to New York. Anything happen to you over there, who responds for you? You. Because it's you come out of where God put you. 
God put you here. God said, I will protect you here. I will feed you here. I will provide for you here. If you come out, I'm not going to forgive you. Because that's where I put you. So it no matter how you pray, it no matter how you intercede, until you go back where God put you, you suffer. No man assigned for the presence of God. I'm closing in a minute. Anytime you come out of the presence of God, you suffer. You can know when you're out of the presence of God. Look at sickness start take you, look at problems start take you, look at headaches start take you. It's a sign to pull back. Get back in line with God. Because if you don't get back in line with God, the Bible will fulfill the wages of sin is death. And why God not kill her yet is because you're not sin yet. You think I don't know you jump through the wind and jump the fence and go over Miss Pam House? Why God not kill you yet is because you don't come against his anointing yet. You don't come against his presence yet. Anytime you sin, sickness take you, headache take you, long suffering take you, things happen. If you're not singing, then nothing will take you. It's simple. Because the wages of sin is death and that part of the Bible is right. God bless you and have a wonderful day with Jesus.